This is lesson two, input, output, and processing. Computer literacy uh, is what we're looking at. You need to have your book out and flip through and underline or mark various pages. Our objectives here are to identify and describe standard and specialized input devices, also output devices, connect input and output devices, and consider various computer performance factors. Here's your vocabulary. You know what to do there. Uh, study those in any way you want. There are also some methods available in Blackboard. You can go to the Cengage Brain and connect in there and uh, there's uh, information presented using flashcards so you can study your vocabulary using that. Standard input devices, a modem, modulate, demodulate, a device that allows one computer to talk to another. Of course keyboards most commonly used. Uh, they can be ergonomic most of them are. The specialized one that you see on the right, actually, you can project an image of your keyboard onto the desk and uh, type on your keyboard using that. There are flexible ones that fold up. Then pointing devices, several of those available. Most common is the mouse that's uh, optomechanical or optical. Wireless mice are common. Trackball mouse is used by people that uh, may have a little trouble moving their arm. And uh, fewer of them use radio frequency. And honestly, I've never really used or seen used a foldable mouse. So a trackball works like a mouse, you just move the ball around with your fingers instead of moving the mouse around. Of course the touchpad is uh, prolific on laptops when you don't have room for a mouse. So there's also a stick that's in the middle of the keyboard and that is, takes a little practice to learn how to use. Not, uh, I don't see a whole lot of people using that. Your audio input um, is uh, connected by USB or by a standard audio cord a plug, an eighth inch plug. Your output data includes monitors, all kinds of descriptions of those. The LCD used to be the most modern and newest ones and now LED monitors have pretty much uh, taken the market and a lot of people produce those, a lot of companies produce the LEDs, they're very good. And your output device, your printer, a laser printer, an inkjet printer are your uh, most common. Speakers to output the sound of course, digital cameras that connect either through Bluetooth or wireless or with a cable. And you can take pictures and store those and transfer them to the computer's memory on the hard drive or other storage device. Game controllers, joysticks and wheels, and of course the Wii uh, that is its own specialized input device uh, for whatever sport or game you're playing. Scanners and barcode readers where we can scan hard copy um, into the computer and they can be barcode scanners to scan in the UPC codes, magnetic scanners for those stripes on cards. And then there's optical character recognition possible where we can take a printed page and scan it in and it would actually turn it into uh, editable word document. Of course the touch display screen, your iPads, your iPhones and 
all the other smartphones. You can use a stylus, uh, a digital pen if you like, so you can write and take notes on your screen. And some smartphones and some tablets do a better job with that than others. Your environmental probes and sensors, workers can view information such as temperature and humidity. Smoke detector readings, really all types of input devices can be connected to a computer and they're used uh, prolifically in industry. The remote controls, where we can control a television, a light and fan, we can control any kind of device. Uh, using our smartphone with a particular application. So that's considered an input device. Security devices, biometrics, so it can recognize a person based on their thumbprint or their retina, their voice pattern. Virtual devices, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that you saw, the keyboard. So here it is projected onto a tabletop and uh, also a keyboard for uh, like a piano or an organ could be uh, projected onto a tabletop. Then we have touch sensitive pads uh, that allow you to scroll through a list, adjust the volume, play music, any kind of input uh, where you need to go uh, increase or decrease the intensity uh, those are available on computers. Then there's all types of devices for the physically challenged, whether it be your eyes or your ears, uh, you know, for hearing uh, challenged or for those that uh, have a uh, difficulty seeing and have uh, maybe macular problems, so they can uh, have macular degeneration <clears throat> so they can use large monitors and we can also zoom up and enlarge in, in images. Then connecting to the computer specialized output devices continued. We got projectors, fax machines that are really not used very much anymore where you can send a piece of paper to another machine. Uh, some of you may not have even ever used one. I think we have one in our building. I don't really ever hear anybody using it. We scan things now and turn them into PDFs and email them. Of course, uh, controls for devices and robots. Special types of printers that aren't used very much anymore, but for uh, any kind of uh, printing that might have to withstand uh, weather, a harsh environment, the thermal printers uh, in large scale, and then there's the thermal printers that you use every day at the uh, checkout at uh, Walmart or at the restaurant. Uh, mobile printers that can be anywhere and you connect to them. Label and postage printers and uh, plotters, which are really large inkjet printers and uh, have one of those in the CAD lab if you want to uh, take a peek at it. For the physically challenged, as uh, discussed, we have screen magnifiers uh, available so they can move uh, a window around and look at things. Uh, screen readers and the voice synthesizers that will read uh, the image, read the information on the screen. When we connect to a computer, uh, we do it through a port or a jack. It's an interface to which a, a device is connected. The USB has become pretty much the standard and you can connect up to 127 devices with a single connector. So you can buy a serial bus and uh, connect a lot of devices. That way you're not plugging in and unplugging the device. Plug and play uh, invented by Microsoft allows 
you to connect a device you through USB or other ports and the software operating system finds it. The other type that's high speed is called FireWire and uh, it's 400 megabits per second and you can connect 63 devices because of the speed you have less that you can connect at one time. There's not a lot of product out there that I've seen that use the FireWire uh, and some laptops or computers do not even have that connection. Another type is the SCSI, S-C-S-I, right here. And it's a special type of bus uh, that connects right into the CPU. The uh, uh, infrared connection and, of course, Bluetooth. There's a lot of Bluetooth connection on devices. And it's a specialized little wireless connection. Uh, it does not have, it has very high speed. You cannot have more than one connected at a time. Uh, that is one activity at a time with the Bluetooth. Expansion slots are openings on the motherboard where we can put uh, additional specialized input output boards onto the motherboard. Not so much so on laptops. Um, a different type of interface is used there. For most hardware devices to work, they need a set of instructions that communicates uh, what the operating system needs. And uh, this, you know, to be able to communicate with the device, and it's called a driver that drives the device, if you want to think of it that way. So the computer's performance factors are affected by the speed of the processor, how many cycles per second. So some standard cycles of, of processors are like 2.4, 2.6 gigahertz. And then the amount of memory, uh, if you have more RAM, then more of the instructions can load and be available at a higher speed than pulling the instructions off of the hard drive uh, or from the web. Hard, hard disk, uh, the bigger and the faster, the quicker it can process data, uh, that is, retrieve and store the data. And then video, you need uh, as much video memory as you can afford, about 512 megabytes uh, is really good for most of your operating systems. So, to summarize, input devices enable you to input data and commands into the computer. The most common are the keyboard and mouse. Other types of devices include a trackball, joystick, a wheel, pointing stick, touch display, screen, stylus, voice recognition device, touchpad, scanner, digital camera, video camera, and biometric scanner. Then we have monitors and printers that are output devices and the most common type of output. Monitors make the soft copy, what you see on the screen. You can't take it around with you. Uh, in other words, it stays there on the screen. Hard copy, you can feel and touch and it's on a piece of paper or other media. The criteria for selecting a printer include the speed, print quality, and the cost. Input and output devices have to be connected to the computer. We do that through a port. The peripheral devices where we can connect, we connect them through a serial, a parallel, USB, universal serial bus uh, type of ports. USB is the current standard and has replaced those other ports we used to see on common on all computers called serial and parallel. They were really big, really big cables. Firewire uh, can have up to 63 external devices and it's very fast. SCSI and infrared and Bluetooth 
are also considered special purpose ports and Bluetooth is very common. SCSI uh, is used on devices or were used on devices where we needed to transfer lots of data very quickly. It's kind of expensive uh, and a lot of computers have just adopted the USB and for right now that seems fast enough and you can always get something with a firewire and that would be as fast as using a SCSI. A computer's performance is affected by the speed of the processor, amount of RAM, hard disk size, speed and capability of the monitor and the disk organization. So that concludes uh, lesson two review. Go ahead and now read. If you have not, read the, the chapter and do the uh, vocabulary words and the kernels of uh, knowledge, learning kernels, uh, matching problems, and uh, true false questions that is. And uh, go back to your blackboard and, and follow along in the rest of the lesson there. And uh, email me any questions that you have about any of the material.